guys so I made this water drop tutorial the other night and I want to modify it so I'm gonna do a really quick video fast forwarded through of my modifications most of it will be very similar it's just gonna be slight tweaking um, if a lot of you really want me to slow it down and and tell you exactly what I'm doing I can do that but you know, you definitely comment if you want me to slow it down. Again, most of it will be like this other video. There's just going to be a few things that I'm going to do differently. So I'm going to, like I said, speed it up, fast forward it along. Um, and maybe I'll pause at parts that I'm changing. Okay, so I'm going to start with my alcohol inks. And rather than just use one tinted and one lightly tinted, I'm going to do three tints. One slightly darker, not fully opaque, just slightly darker, lighter, lighter. And that's where I'll start.
Because okay, so I did my Skinner blend. I'm about okay with that. I also am adding some white and translucent together, and that will need in the in the um, next part of this. I'm gonna just add a little white and translucent and mix it together, and um, I'll use it a little later. I just wanted to say that because we didn't do that in the first one. So just mix about equal parts, white and translucent. Maybe a little more translucent than white. <clears throat> And just get that evenly mixed. I need a little bit more in this. Or maybe two parts translucent to one part white. Or even a, a tinted translucent. Or maybe you could even add a little bit of, of blue or a translucent blue to it. I just want to use this um, in one part that I thought would look a little better and give it a little, a little better out, outcome. We'll see. And I'm just making a small amount of this. This isn't a lot, but just, just a little a little Skinner blend. Okay, and I'll be back once I get that mixed. And um, the next part's pretty much the same. And I might actually take this little high part because I added some extra plain translucent. I wanted a little more translucent in the middle here. And I may actually mix that in here. That will give it a little blue tint and a little more translucent. Yep, that looks better to me. So that's starting to mix it a little bit, so I'll finish mixing that. This is just from the first video, I think they'll add a little more detail than what I had in the first video. But the first video looks pretty good. I just wanted to modify it just a hair. I hope you can follow along well enough. So all I did was mix some alcohol inks with my translucent and then I made put the black on one corner and a little more white on the other corner because I wanted a little more white in this one um, or the light side. I wanted a little more than last time so I did a little more white in my blend and I blended it and I'm happy with that blend. I, I think we'll be fine. And now the only thing so far that's different other than adding a little more white on the corner of my Skinner blend is this strip of translucent white and a little of my colored translucent, okay? So that's the only thing that so far has changed and I will be back in a minute.
So pretty much everything I've done is exactly the same. I put a little bit in between my two spots. I'm going to roll this out on a thinner setting. And you can decide, you can play with this. Just make little batches and see how thin you want this. You're really just going to have to play with it. But just a thin setting. And I'm going to wrap this. First let me get a straight edge here. Let me make sure that's roughly about the same width. Yep. I'm going to get a straight edge. And I want to put this around about up to the gray. Okay, so maybe up to like here. And what I'm looking for is the white to kind of go up around the edge a little bit more. Okay, I really liked the white down here, but it didn't travel up enough. So that's why I'm adding this little thin layer. That's my main modification I wanted to do to this cane. So I'm going to add a little bit of white, maybe not all the way up to the black, but let me pinch it too so it tapers. I'm going to pinch this edge so it just gets a little thinner. You know, you could set it down and just push it. I want this part to be a little bit thinner. And then I'll do the same with the other end too once I get the right length. And not all the way up to the dark gray, but somewhere around there. All around the bottom. Once you roughly have the length, cut it off. And using the blade side of your blade really helps. Let me just see how high that will go. Too high because once I stretch it and thin this side out, it'll actually pinch this side off. It'll actually stretch it. So then also do the same thing, thin this side out so the white tapers, the translucent white tapers up. And this will be a white, but it won't be as opaque. Kind of like my lace cane I used, I think it was my lace cane I used um, white mixed with translucent because I had a lot of that scrap. And both sides don't need to be even again like most things, you know, it's organic so you can kind of mush it to get it to feather up a little bit. I just want a little hint of something else. I'll cut this excess off as much as I can. I need to put a piece of tape on my blade, and honestly, I know I need to do it. I just have been lazy. Okay. And then the rest is pretty much going to be exactly the same as last time. So to keep this video short, let me just round it one more time. Um, we're just going to wrap, <clears throat> we're going to mix translucent and black. And um, we're going to wrap it around. But I think I might mix just a little of this in with the black, just to lighten and make it like a gray rather than a full black. I have a little scrap translucent here I'm going to use on the that I had on my slices the other day from that flower. I mean, it's got a little color in it, but I'm not overly worried about that, so might as well try to use some of it. And then I'm going to mix a little more translucent in with this black, because I want it to be a little more, it's really opaque on here, and I want it to be a little bit more translucent. So I'm going to mix that in. Just take a hunk off my block here. And I'm going to mix it so it will um, condition when I mix it. I hate conditioning clay. I hate conditioning clay. Okay, so I'm going to mix that up, and then we will add a layer around. Well, I might as well just stay on. Okay, let me mix this up, and then I'll be back. Okay, and then I also did this shadow a little thinner, because I think it's a little too big there. It's a little too shadowed, so this is on my third setting. But again, play with your settings and see what you like. Don't, you know... I've seen so many people's projects lately and they look wonderful. They're taking the technique that I showed them and they're modifying it. And that's really, really what I want. I want you guys to learn how to, how to make your own and how to modify techniques you may see. Um, pick your own colors. Really just learn how to think about polymer clay yourself, you know? Um, and that's what a lot of people are saying, like, listening to me kind of work it out is helping them, is helping them problem solve themselves. And that makes me happy. That's, that's the whole goal. 
Um, so just like I did the white, I'm actually going to taper this as well. So I'm going to thin this side out too, trying to make it fairly even, and that will taper it. And again, we're going to put this a little higher than the white, but just a little bit than the whiter outside, not all the way up, just a little bit, and then wrap it around. If it's a little too short, that's okay. You can pull. We'll just make it a little thinner in that spot. But that's fine because we're not going for a big, big bulk. It's a little narrow when I rolled it out, so I'm just stretching it. Let me just stretch it all the way down, might as well. And then once you roughly know where you're going to need, cut it and go a little shorter than what you expect. Because once you stretch it out, it'll actually go further than you think. There, I think I'm more happy with that. So what I'll do is I'll reduce and I'll fast forward when I reduce because you've seen me reduce these circle canes. Again, if you want more detail, look at the other water drop video because it um, does it in way more detail. Um, like I said, I did change a little bit about this, but it, not much. I mean, the technique is basically the same. I only added the little rim of white. I put a little more translucent coloring in there or um, alcohol ink coloring to tint the translucent a little bit more than I did the first time. But I'm going to reduce this down, and then what I'll probably do is mix up a piece of scrap, and I'll put it on there just to see how it looks, and see if I got the um, effect I wanted. Okay, ready? I'm
Okay, so I just, from my uh, flower that I made the other day, I had this scrap blue. You can use whatever color you want to make just a test chip, like I did here. Um, so I just mixed them up. Now I'm going to cut them. Obviously, you normally want to wait until your cane has set a little bit so it doesn't smear as much. Make sure your blade is clean. I'm going to cut one of each size so that way I can see which ones I like the best. I'm going to try to cut them as thin as I possibly can while it's soft like this because I just reduced it. And I didn't get a whole slice. Let me try that again. Okay, I got a whole slice there. And you can also pull and, and manipulate it, okay? Change it whatever shape you want. If you want it more round, you can change it more round. If you want it more square, you can change it more. Or oval. You probably want a lot square, but oval. But they are raindrops, so they are blobs, you know? They don't fall perfectly. And then the, and then just gently lay that on there. And then I'm going to take something and if any of my I know it's hard to see on here, but any if any of my black got pulled out too far, I'll just push it in. I think I showed you that on the other video in my test piece. Just round it cuz they're not square, you know. Okay, we'll burnish that in a second. Let me cut, that's the big one. This is a medium. And, you know, the ends are a little distorted too from reducing it. Okay, and I'll leave that one a little wonky. Why not? After I got looking at them, when I made my test piece, I kind of liked them, or my test pendant that I was going to do the tutorial on, I kind of liked them smaller. But you do want like a big one too, or a bigger one. So that one got flattened out, so I'm just trying to round it. So someone mentioned that Meg Newberg has done one like this. Um, all I did was Google polymer clay raindrops and I saw a photo and um, a lot of my tutorials are based on photos on the internet on Google like flowers or something that I've seen and I really liked so I tried to make it I tried to um, make something similar and then share it with people because a lot of them are like canes um, on Google that I bet if I went out to the website people are selling them but I don't even usually check who made them. I just kind of look at it and go, that's pretty. Honestly, a lot of times to get ideas, I just search polymer clay. And um, it gives me a lot of inspiration. So if this is made by someone and I'm kind of matching a similar technique, unfortunately it's polymer clay and a lot of techniques are reused. Okay, so a couple of these are a little thick. So to get them a little thinner, I'm going to shave them off on my blade. I think I have showed you that at another tutorial, in another tutorial on oh, my lace cane one to get it a little thinner if you're not perfect. I hope it doesn't smush too, too much because it's so soft. Yeah, it might smush a little too much. But again, this is my test piece. I'll just burnish it out, whatever. So I don't have a piece of wax paper. I just went to the dollar store and bought a whole roll of wax paper just to use for clay and then I'll cut a little sheet off for my burnishing. I don't bake with wax paper, that's for sure, because the wax will melt. Um, so I just leave it down here and I got a, I got a sheet of press, press and seal down here and I got a, a, a roll and then I also have a roll of plastic wax, wax if I like to plastic wrap if I want to dome anything, which I usually don't dome because I usually resin. Okay, so I'm just going to burnish these out flat so I can really see how they look. And I'm just kind of shaping them a little bit as I burnish. Pull that one a little more that way. So the shadow is definitely smaller, which I'm happy with. And there's also a hint of white around it. So when I bake these, I'll show you the difference. But around the edge here, there is now a hint of white, 
where there wasn't here and I really wanted that um, also I mean I did get a little striations my Skinner blend could have been a little bit better here but I think I'll add something cool and it has a little ripply effect in the white here you see that so it looks kind of maybe like it's jiggling or something you can't really see it in the small one the other thing is I should have stretched this guy out and made it a little longer but all in all I'm okay with that and I can vary this one and that one and have two different kind of type raindrops on my project you know and this is definitely a smaller amount a lot smaller amount of clay when I'm doing tutorials I try to um, do larger amounts than I would tend to do at home unless I really don't want to um, so you've seen me do smaller amounts but to show you a certain technique I usually make the canes a little bigger than what I intend on doing and so that's that um, and then I usually like to just take one and bake it plain and that way I have it I'm gonna put that and this in my book with my modified technique just a plain one and one with backing and that way I can see it all Let me just get my fingerprints off of that I'm going to go put this in the oven and then I'll show you guys the difference between the two when I'm done. I got a little crease there from this wax paper. It's bugging the heck out of me, even though it is only a test piece. I don't want it there. Well, good enough. Okay, I'll be back when I only bake my test chips that go in my book, my inspirational book, um, for 30 minutes because I'm not doing anything with them than taping them in my book. But I will be back. Okay, so they're out of the oven and I wanted to show you the difference so these two are my first ones these two are the ones I just just did and I definitely have more of a blue tint which I do like okay so you don't need the blue tint if you want it do it if you don't you don't you could also add a different color if you know you're gonna do a purple flower you could add a light purple tint or a pink you know and that way you get more of the color reflecting through just in case you don't cut it super thin um, the other part I like is this little white strip around and that I really didn't have on this so that gives it a little more definition there it comes up a little higher that I do like that was my main thing I wanted to do the other thing was on my Skinner blend square which is why this one make your Skinner blend a little more even I was just kinda of being impatient it's late it's after work I'm tired I don't know if you can hear it in my voice but when I made my Skinner blend this last time you saw it I added more white which was fine but I put it all the way down like I added a little piece all the way down to the bottom don't add that bottom piece because then it'll blend across you want a layer of just completely plain translucent so because I added I didn't taper it off like I should have like we did the first time I tapered it off because I added that little piece down here it blended up a lot higher which isn't a bad thing and I don't think it's horrible and it shows up a lot on this really dark but on a flower I don't think it'll show up that much and then I used a thinner piece of the black here to get a lighter shadow so um, really all of this will depend on what you want out of it it's also if you look at the one not on any not on anything compared to the one that's on something let me see I can get it to stick there um, oh that's the side that was on the tile is too reflective for you um, this here we added more translucent in so it's more of a grayer whereas this one's more pure black and I know that's really hard for you to see but I can definitely see the difference there so the shadow is definitely more translucent than pure black so those are my modifications and each time I make it I'll probably modify it more but I do like the basic idea of it and I do like the, um, I actually kind of like the how it is a little swirly, you know, to me that gives more of, rather than this one, that's kind of straight across, this one has these little ripples in it, and that to me is more indicative of water 
Maybe it's getting a little wind on it or something. You know what I mean? But either way, I think both are fine to me. Both look fine. Um, so I hope this gives you ideas on how you can modify it and how you can play with it. So make it however you want to make it. You know, just have fun and, and play and enjoy. Just enjoy. If you do anything, please just enjoy. And what we'll do, what I'll be doing this weekend, is making a pendant with my big blue flower that I just finished posting. And it has the full flower at the end, fast forward, but using this petal technique to get this design. You could use any petal technique. Um, we're going to make it large, so I, I reduced it down so it's, it's quite big. Um, and we're going to do an up-close petal or flower with water drops on them. So that's my next project. The other thing is you could just make a petal cane and squish that onto a backing and lay it out however you like. You don't actually need to make a full flower cane. A petal cane works totally fine. So you can make a large petal and then just um, stick it onto your backing. So slice a petal, stick it on, slice a petal, stick it on, and make a flower that way, and then slice the center and stick it on. I mean, you can totally make flowers that way. You do not need to make them in full canes. So, anyways, I don't think I need to say much more. I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful for you, please um, like, share, comment. If you have any questions, let me know. You could also join my Facebook page um, if you have any Someone just asked me today to make a pansy cane. I'm not a big fan of the pansy flower, but it's not what I like always either. If I can find a way to come up with a pansy cane, then um, I will. So on my Facebook page, you have to go to the search, the little... I should put that on here for people who aren't familiar with Facebook. At the top of your corner in your Facebook, there's a symbol like this. That's like a magnifying glass. That means you need to search. If you hit that, usually a thing will come up that says people, groups, stuff like that. Hit groups and then type in Katie's apostrophe S, K-A-T-I-E, polymer clay friends. And then my group should pop up. It has a picture of a yellow flower right now. If you want us to do anything or um, work, want me to work on something, or if you just want to share or check out other people's projects and maybe get some inspiration, we're also going to be starting to do, I think, either a monthly or weekly challenge where if someone has a picture or like I have recently these buttons that I bought from my nieces and nephews to do a project with, a craft project with, and these kind of inspired me. So I kept a few, you know, so if you have anything that goes, that would be cool to make something like that out of clay, post a picture and I'll pick a picture and post it for the month. And whether someone makes a pendant, a bowl, um, earrings, I don't care what you make, a cane, I want to see how everybody interprets the same design. And I think it would be a fun challenge. Um, myself and one of my other group members, she posted a picture from a TV show, actually, and we both made a cane. Um, and we actually did it very similarly. We both went about it different ways, but we did it very similarly. And it was kind of neat to see how. Um, so that would be fun to get a bunch of people together doing that and kind of get us all inspired. It could just be you got inspiration from the color of it or the design of it or it made you think about this. So that's what you, I don't know. I think it'll be something fun to do. Anyways, I will see you next time.